Okay, welcome back. We're going over the list on page 1073 of some of the things you can do. The next one on the list is use a load balancer. I mean, if you have lots and lots of traffic coming in to a website, well then split it up so you have two web servers and a load balancer in between. Check application configuration. For example, some some applications are designed to run in a single thread, but you can you can tweak them so that they consume more than one CPU. Your choice. You could go in there and tweak it. So if you don't know about this and don't tweak it, it's going to say, well, yeah, I'm running my little heart out. Well, yeah, how come it aren't, you aren't using more than one CPU? It's like, well, you didn't tell me that was okay. Uh, check for problems with usage. You know, in the real world, you know, you probably need to check to see if what you're using it for is what it's intended to be, that kind of stuff. Organize disks and file system, you know, choose the right kind of RAID scenario. I mean, for example, I typically use a RAID C I'm sorry, a, a RAID 1 for drive C and a RAID 5 to drive D um, because I'll admit the, uh, the, the operating system uh, is going to have a little bit faster than the rest, but I can't afford to have a, a RAID 1 on all my drives. So I have my, I'm, I'm willing to give up a tiny bit of performance drop for that security. But on the C drive where the operating system is, no way. I want it as fast. Okay, that kind of stuff. Monitoring the network, we, we talked about the SS and the netstat command, those guys. And check for any type of inadequacies going on. You're running the VM stat saying, hey, you're running out of RAM or you're running out of this. It would be kind of cool. So continuing that on page 1074, what are the things that you would spot running VM stat? VM stat? Well, there's basically four resources that are going to be slowing you down or four resources under contention, and they're, they're fairly obvious. One is CPU utilization. I mean, if you run top and, and any one of your things is running at 100%, if your CPU is running at 100%, you got a problem. Memory, if your memory is running at 100%, you got a problem. Uh, disk IO, if is that running at 100%, you've got a problem. Network, if that's running at 100%, you've got a problem. So those are the four guys, you know, CPU, memory, disk IO and network IO. So if any one of those guys are being pegged out, you kind of sorry. First of all, now, okay, let's just say uh, it was CPU that got pugged out and you go, well, great, we need, we need to buy another server with our, you know, faster CPU and more cores. Maybe, but I wouldn't jump directly to that conclusion. You got a heck of a lot more homework to do before you can say that. Okay, so with a virtual machine like running ours under VirtualBox, CPU utilization can be tunable. Um, I can go in and change the number of cores. I can say, well, uh, I gave you two cores, but I'm going to give you now three or four. Okay, that's kind of cool. Um, so to tell you the truth, it, CPU being the weak link in the chain is probably not, you know, CPUs are a heck of a lot faster than they used to be. Um, so the likelihood of it being the one that's causing the problem is, is not all that great. Just saying. Disk bandwidth. Remember, everything in the Linux world is a file. So there's a heck of a lot of, of reading and writing disk nonstop. So obviously, switching over to a solid state disk would make a tremendous improvement. Putting it on or put the stuff where you expect lots of read writes like a database. You know, for example, in a database world, you might have the database and have some log files and stuff. Put that on a RAID 1 guy, which is relatively fast. Don't put it on a RAID 5 guy where there's a little bit of a performance hit. Memory. So if you overflow the amount of memory that you need, the machine starts paging, where it takes, say, I'm running out of memory here. I can't do all the stuff you're asking me to do. So I'm just going to take a chunk of memory and write it out to disk so I can free up a chunk for, to use for somebody else. And then when I get it, catch my breath, then I'll write it back to memory and everything will be great. So an easy way to find out how much pressure uh, your memory is, is look for the amount of paging. Now some paging is okay, but if you have an awful lot of paging, that means you're kind of running out. And once again, if you have a virtual machine, it's pretty easy. Oh, all right, I've given you three gigabytes, I think I'll get you four, and you <laughs> tweak up the guy. Network. Okay, there could be some hardware issues, but most likely it's talking about you know latency and bandwidth. And uh, it's kind of hard to solve that one. I mean, yes, you could put in a multiple hard drive, I mean, multiple network cards. And yes, there is a way you can bond them together. But almost always when, you, when the problem is network, it's gonna be, I need a load balancer, right? 
I'm getting I'm getting hit too much from traffic coming in on the network, and I don't normally solve it with with hard with buying more network cards. That's not normally where you solve it. You solve it by installing another server and using a load balancer. There's an interesting thing, and uh, if you're running a VM, it only happens in a VM. It's what's called a stolen CPU cycle. The machine is trying to give you a lot of the CPU cycles, but it's running its own system too. I'm running Windows 10 and I'm running uh, the Linux on the same physical machine. And so there's a cool little thing that they added to VM stat, believe it or not. Um, in fact, uh, if I just do VM stat, I I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna show you what it looks like. It rather than whoop that ain't what I want what the heck this thing is nowhere near the right stuff well that's weird hang on a second how the heck did that happen oh okay I give up I guess I just didn't copy those guys across okay too bad let me keep going so uh there's a there's a when you run VM stat there's a, a an ST column. I don't know if I can demo that here or not, but let me just try. So I just say, okay, VM stat. I don't remember what, what you have to type to make it happen. Uh, yeah, there's ST. ST is the last one on the thing. That's called stolen CPU cycles. And it'll tell you whether or not, so, so let's say, for example, that you have one physical machine and you have two virtual machines in Linux, and one of them is slowing down. Well, we run VM stat for stolen cycles, and that'll basically say if something going on on the host is robbing the the, the virtual machine of, of stuff. Okay, so that's kind of what that's about. Um, analysis of performance problems, page 1076. This is actually often very complex. It's like diagnosing why your car won't start. I mean, there's just so many things you need to think about. So there's basically five steps, and it kind of follows that rule we talked about before about doing one thing at a time. The first one is you formulate the question, like what is it? What's the what? What is the problem? If you can't describe what the problem is, the likelihood of you being able to solve it is relatively low, right? Okay. So first step is what is the hypothesis? I think that the, the server is slow because of memory. Okay. And then you gather and classify evidence, which basically is like you run an experiment. And then you critically appraise the evidence, which means you determine what the results are. And then you summarize it and say, okay, you're right. I was right or I was wrong, one of the two. And then you draw a conclusion that says, yeah, uh, I am running out of memory. I do need to add some more memory. So basically that's the five steps. If you skip around and just jump to uh, spending money, well, then you're, you're basically just going to be spending money. They talk about the perform system performance checkup on page uh, 1077. So having a list, an inventory of all your physical and, and hardware would be kind of cool. Well, there, actually, there are some really cool ones here. There's actually a thing in, in the proc uh, folder. There's lots of these really cool things. For example, I can just say um, cat um, CPU info. And boom, it gives me air, all this cool information. This is my, I'm running on an Intel i9-9900K at 3.6 gigahertz. And, uh, you know, however many cores I've got, I don't see that here, but okay. But anyway, uh, you know, how many cores you have and what kind of processor you have. It's pretty cool information. There's one called MIM info. Let's do that one. And it talks about, you know, all the sticks of RAM and how they're, how they're set up. Of course, in a virtual world, that's a little funky. Uh, disk stat. I don't know if this one's going to work because we don't have physical disk. We have... Yeah, okay. <clears throat> okay, so all this kind of information is kind of cool. The one thing I think about it is the CPU actually gives you the vendor ID. It gives you the exact make and model number down like to the serial number of what... you. The CPU you have in your machine. I think that's pretty cool. Okay. Um, there is another thing. Uh, on page uh, 1078, there's an example of this output of this DMI, Desktop Management Interface, DMI decode. So let me do one of those. 
So I'm going to do a sudo DMI decode. And it's basically going to be the same kind of information. Okay. And then I'm going to say from table one. All right. Oh. And this basically is a little bit more concise information about like the CPU. Uh, that table on page uh, 1078 tells you what all these numbers are. You know, table one, table two, table three. So I just picked table one, which basically says this is the motherboard, rather not not. So this is, it says it's an Inotech and it's a virtual box and da 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 da. da. Okay. So um, analyzing CPU usage. So I'm going to do VM stat. Uh, five, wait five seconds and uh, give me five of them. That's what that means. And so five seconds, it'll update. And then we'll do five of them and quit. That's basically what that means. So if you're kind of looking at this guy, looking at the like the memory part, first of all, I'm not swapping anything, which is kind of amazing. Um, how much free space, how much buffer, how much cache? Swap in, swap out. Um, di you know, disk in, disk out, system in, CPU, all those kind of good things. So. If you have 50% of non-idle time in the user space, that's just kind of the way of thinking about it, and the other 50% is in system space, that basically means you're kind of sort of balanced. It, it, it's, it's okay you, to have 50% of your CPU being used for itself and 50% us, we're, in, we're nowhere near that. We're, we're at zero, so don't worry about it. Uh, our CPU user space and system space all say zero, but that's beside the point. So check to see if the idle percent, there's an idle there. Uh, we're at, so we're at a hundred percent idle <laughs> because we're not doing anything. But man, if you're running VM stat and your idle goes to zero, that means holy moly, 100% of your system is being used by something. Most likely it's something wrong, okay? Because you don't normally design systems that run that, that way. Uh, I'm gonna skip over the thing about context switches and interrupts and those kind of things. If you have multiple core processors, uh, you can, there's one called MP stat. Uh, I'm not going to do that here. And then there's one called uptime. And you can get load averages for one minute average and five minute average and 15 minute average. That's pretty cool. And then of course, using the PX guy, PS, remember the AUX guy or top where you, where you can get which processes, if I did top, it's going to tell me which one of the processes is consuming the most amount of energy. And right now it's nothing. <laughs> it's just, in fact, the highest running one now is it was the top command just a second ago. Okay, which means we're not doing jack on our system right now. So memory management. Um, so memory management is virtual. That don't We're not talking about virtual box or any type of virtual machine thing. The word virtual memory has existed long before we had virtual machines. So what that basically means is every process gets assigned a chunk of memory. So if I have, it looks like, let's just look at this. Let's say I only have 33 processes running. Um, let's just assume that all 33 get an entire gigabyte of RAM assigned to them. Well, wait a minute. I don't have 33 gig of RAM in, in this machine. I got three gig of RAM. So how the heck does it do that? Well, it's done through virtual uh, memory. Every machine, every process is being given a chunk of memory that it thinks is its own. The fact that it's actually mixed in with all the rest of the stuff is not all that relevant. It's all magic. And I'm not going to get into the ma the magic part of this. Hey, hey, you know, go take the uh, architecture course uh, to learn more about that. But basically, it's it's in a page, and pages can be swapped out. So therefore, I can I can allocate to you more memory than I physically have without causing any problems. It's kind of weird. Um, if you're doing memory management, one of the things is the thing called the least recently used. What chunk of memory needs to be swapped out next? Because I don't want to swap out something that's currently being used. I want to swap out a chunk of memory that's not being used. Okay, we're coming up on the 15-minute mark. You know how this is.